What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. KG is back, back with a very late post-match reaction to the Southampton versus Leeds United game. You know, listen, I needed the time off. It was wonderful as well. I feel re refreshed, recharged. It was a wonderful weekend, absolutely wonderful. And, um, you know, everything but this result, I'll say that, I'll say that for sure. But before I get into it, please hit a like on the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and of course, drop your comments. Uh, thank you to Ryan, who's joined the channel as a member. If you want to join the channel as a member, which helps me out, helps the channel out, please hit the link in the description. It really does go a long way. And yeah, you know what? Let's get into it. Obviously, this isn't going to be as detailed and as long as the usual post-match chat we have. Usually, I'm interacting with you guys, but I just want to get my main observations off about the game. Southampton 3, Leeds United 1, and it mentioned in the preview, and I, and I have to refer back to my preview a little bit in this one as well, because a couple of the main things came up from that preview in this game, and I didn't think it would happen so heavily, but it is something that I, I, I did forewarn. And this isn't me doing an I told you so, but it was just kind of obvious, in, in my opinion. You know, when we had that possession-heavy game against Watford, we had all the ball. We Watford didn't do anything. They didn't trouble us. So we came out with a clean sheet in that game, no problem. Um, but this, and I said this in the preview, it was always going to be a different game. Southampton, even in the form that they're in, they have players that can hurt you. And if they're high, their risk and reward style, if it comes off, it can hurt you. And we saw from minute one that they were coming hot and heavy and we couldn't cope. And, and this goes back to team selection. I'm afraid Farker did get this one absolutely wrong. And that's going to happen with, with him. He's, he's going to get things wrong all the time. As much as I'm sure a lot of us are behind him and everything else like that, doesn't mean he's not prone to a mistake. And he did make a mistake. And the most glaring one, I'm sure you're bored of hearing it, is, is playing Lee and Cooper. You, you have Joe Roden back from suspension. You put Joe Roden in. Said it in the preview. He's our best centre back. Put him in there. And, and this isn't me having to go at Liam Cooper. It's just what Liam Cooper is today. You know, he's never been outstanding, in my opinion. He's never been outstanding. But in 2023, I, I looked at him in particular, and there was a and there was a few times in the game, and, and people that are getting older, they can relate to this. When he moved out of his position from left center back up the field a bit, when he was trying to run back, it was everything. You know, when you have to put your head down and, and make sure that you can get your head down and <sighs> And, and run back. He did that multiple times in the game. He cannot keep up with the pace no more. And one person I did mention on Southampton's team in the preview, again, go back if you don't believe me, was Adam Armstrong. Because I know how he plays. He's a quick, pacey striker. He's a threat. And if you've got Liam Cooper on that left centre backside, he's going to attack him. And that's what happened in this game. And it happened from early. And we can talk about the quiet performers like Perot, uh, Rutter, and Dan James and all those guys. That's fine. But Everything starts from the back. And if you start off with an Achilles heel in the defense, we, we, we're down 1-0 and then you're chasing the game from early on away from home. It's not ideal. So as much as, yeah, the attack weren't on it uh, in this game, you have to talk about the thing that has been our Achilles heel for the past couple of years and it's our defense. Liam Cooper there, just it's, it's not, just forget it. And unless we're playing multiple matches in a week and someone needs a rest, he has to stay on the bench, has to stay on the bench. He's not a starter in this Leeds United team. And, and I just think that, and I've said it in my in my transfer window thing, I think that these captains' armbands that we've got here with the two captains are just, they're, they're anchors at the moment. They're anchors and it's pulling the team down. It's pulling the team down because another, another thing with the Liam Cooper selection is, and no one's ever going to say this publicly, no one's ever going to admit it, but you can tell by body language, I feel like Pascal and Elan Melier, they, they're having to work twice as hard because he's in the team. There was even points where Cooper would make a mistake and, and think it was Melier. Cooper's looking at Melier like, what are you doing? It's not actually Elan Melier. Even though for me, Melier could have maybe died for a couple of the shots, okay? But you can just tell that when he's there, the team are having to do twice the work to make up for his incapabilities, his capabilities as a defender. 
and and again, I'm I'm not I'm trying not I'm trying not to be horrible here. But when he is going to start in these games, when we're not on, when we're not having all the possession in in our own way, like we did against Watford, we are going to be under pressure, especially against pacey strikers. I've always said with Liam Cooper, put him up against a battering ram. I, I, I'm I'm okay with that. If you put him up against a bulldozer of a striker, cool. But pacey, intelligent strikers, he's got no business going up against. So, listen, Daniel Farker said as well he didn't think his choice of center backs was an issue today he didn't feel that was the reason why lee's lost the 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 adam armstrong run behind liam cooper and liam cooper not being able to catch him kind of says a different story and and look and this is fair play danny farker's not going to call out players and say yeah this guy's to blame that guy's to blame and i understand that but for me actions speak louder than words he also said that he doesn't change a winning team but we also got a clean sheet against Millwall and he took Luke Ayling out of the team, didn't he? So, you know, he, he's not, he, he's just trying to protect his players here. Got no issues with that. But your action speed louder than words. I fully expect Joe Roden to come back into this team and partner Pascal Strauch. Um, Strauch, for me, wasn't good either. I think his goal was great. You know, he had like six players around him and he still managed to volley it with his right foot. But I feel like his performance is is attached to having to play with with his center back there liam cooper i do but that's not saying much on pascal because he needs to be his own man he's getting older now he needs to be his own man and he needs to take control and he, he doesn't do that yet but he obviously works better with joe roden and i expect that to come back sam byram as well he got sent for a little you know breakdown in session when he got sent to the shot by smallbone and you know that wasn't good from from sam byram either it wasn't a good performance all around but I do feel like when you have defective cogs in your system, it can destroy the whole machine. And I think that's what happened in this game. I felt like this was going to either be a, a basketball game of a scoreline or a tight one. And we just let it run out. We The game was done in 40 minutes being 3-0 down. You know, we're just not going to come back from that away at Southampton, no matter the form they're in. Uh, and that's the most disappointing thing. And you all say about um, something else Daniel Farker said which I, I completely disagree with. Um, he was asked about leaving out Joe Roden because that was a big topic after the game. Um, he's had he's had a, he's been very good this season, but not perfect either. More to the point, he said it would have been sending the wrong message, changing the team after they played as they did against Watford. Couldn't disagree more because that that's like saying, let, let's make an extreme example because we always love those. If Erling Haaland uh, misses a game and then Man City's young striker, whoever comes in, scores two goals and Haaland's available the next game, you leave your young striker in against Arsenal and, and say, yeah, you, you did well in the last game, you stay. Football just doesn't work like that. There's a hierarchy. You have your best players on the pitch at all times when available and when fit. And, and that's what Farker needs to do because he can't keep doing this. If you're going to, every time someone has a good game, you keep them in. I mean, it's that's that's a merit system. That's fine. But then it works the other way, too. If someone has a bit of a bad game or a stinker, they're probably thinking while they're on the pitch, oh, man, I've, I've just made a mistake there. That's probably cost a goal. Probably not going to pick the next game. You know what I mean? It can go both ways. So for me, play your best team where possible. That That's all I would say on that. And we will see in the next fixture against QPR. And we'll find that out in the in the post pre-match press pre-match press conference see i haven't done this in a while people uh and we'll, we'll find out together i'll be live for that one don't worry um what what i was gonna say is well stats they do that you know stats tell you a bit of a story but you know what none of these stats tell you just how how flat this team was in this game considering it was the battle of the relegation brothers you know a team well informed a team out of sorts the manager's job is probably on the line in this game and we just, we didn't come out with any vim. We didn't come out with any purpose. We, we wasn't doing much of, of, of anything. We let in Southampton play around with us a lot of the time. There was barely any pressing going on for, for the people that love all the pressing stuff. There was hardly any of that. It just, that's why I'm always saying stats don't always tell a story. If you looked at these stats, you think it was pretty even, but they they wanted it way more than Leeds United did in this game. And that's the most, and that's one of the most disappointing things. I always say you're gonna lose games. You know, no one, no team is perfect. We just see Man City lose to Wolves. You're gonna lose games, but there's ways of losing. And I just felt with everything in our favor in this one, we didn't do enough. And we give Southampton the impetus before two minutes to then have you know build their confidence even more and get the three points. So you know, we haven't quite stopped being charity FC yet, people. 
that's a work in progress. You know, we'll work on that. We'll work on it. Am I worried though? I'm not worried. It's one game. And I did say in the preview, so, you know, I back myself with the preview. If we lost the game, it's not the end of the world. But now we need, you know, we've got a quick turnaround for the QPR game. We need to get back in the, back on the saddle for that one. Um, and I just want to show this as well. Not not so much our position in the table, but more who we who we should be looking at. And that is Leicester City. Leicester City now played nine, won eight, lost one. Unbel just just tremendous. That 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 is how it's done. And and the thing is with with Leicester, they're going to to places like Blackburn here and winning four one. That is why for me Leicester are just so clear. Oh, I didn't share the tab. Here we are. Not redoing it. Leicester beating Blackburn four one. Yeah. And and it's things like that. It's results like that that Leicester are going to get, which just separate them from the rest of the pack. It really will because Blackburn is a tough place to go in this in this division. It's a tough place to play, and Leicester just made it look easy. Win beating them four one. It's it, that's an amazing result. But that's not to say we're not going to get results like that. But yeah, the, the 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 result against Southampton, who had lost four in a row, by the way, that was not good enough. In, in my opinion, but we get back on it against QPR. I guess that's the best thing about, about championship football is the quick turnaround in games. We get back on it and we, we must get three points in that one. We must. Uh, so we'll wait and see what Daniel Fark has got to say about that. Um, in, in regards to maybe possible team selection, I don't think he'll give anything away, but it would be nice to see a couple more positive changes in this team. I, ex I expect to see Archie Gray back starting. I, I, I definitely expect to see that. It will be interesting to see if he brings back in um, the vice captain. You know, Shackleton didn't have a great game either. He got done himself on one of the goals. Um, it just wasn't a good outing for the defence, unfortunately. Just was not a good outing in defence. But listen, people, we lose the game 3-1. We have to move on from that. Quick turnaround, QPR. Let's get the result. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow for the for the preview and we'll talk about it in full there I'll get your thoughts in full but until then leave your comments below on anything in regards to the game um hit the likes please do that best way to help the channel out and of course subscribe i'll see you soon people peace out <laughs>